If you've watched any of my other videos on whipped soap, you'll know that I did a surfactant version a couple of times. Well, this is a proper whipped soap. It is actually soap. So I'm gonna go through it now with you and show you just how easy it is so you don't have to rely on bases and their unreliability anymore. I'm not putting the formula up here. It will be linked in the blog post below. So please go and check out the description, basically because it is a bit more complicated than just writing these ingredients down. What I'm showing here is that the importance of measuring in grams and on a proper scale, because these measurements do not represent what it shows on the beaker. So the glycerin that I'm showing there, there's actually 100 grams of glycerin there, but you'll see on the beaker it shows 80. If it was water, it would come up to the 100 grams, but because it's glycerin and it weighs heavier, it comes down lower in the beaker. This is why you should always work in grams and never teaspoons, tablespoons, cups, etc. Anyway, on with the recipe. If you're a cold process soap maker, then this is for you. Um, you'll either have some soap shreds from beveling the edges of your soaps, or you've got some soap bars that you can grate. And then you end up with some soap shreds looking a bit like this. And what we do is we melt them down with other ingredients to create our whipped soap. So the other ingredients we need are distilled water, vegetable glycerin, and stearic acid. The water and the glycerin act as a solvent to create polar bonds to help the structure of the whip soap. Basically, if you want to know more about uh, polar and non-polar oils and bonds, then my formulation course linked below um, tells you all about that. Um, but for now, you're fine following the recipe as is. What we'll do, is we'll add the soap shreds to a crock pot or slow cooker and then we're adding our water and our glycerin and then what we need to add as well as this is some stearic acid now the stearic acid will give it its structure and make sure that the soap doesn't collapse in on itself once it's whipped and of course stearic acid has its own lovely moisturizing and uh, beneficial properties for the skin as well. I'll go over in the blog post exactly how much to use of each of these um, and the wiggle room that you have in either direction depending on your initial soap recipe. So put all of this in your crock pot and give it a stir to sort of mix it up. Make sure you haven't got too many lumps in the stearic acid. And then just start that on low. Um, you can always turn it up if you find it's going too slow. It does take a while. You're probably looking at 45 minutes to an hour for this size of recipe to all melt down. Come back and check on it periodically and just make sure that any lumps are broken up so that it doesn't take too long to melt down. Once it's lump free and a sort of fairly smooth paste, you can turn off the crock pot and transfer this to another heat resistant bowl. Just make sure you're using oven gloves or some kind of heat protection on your hands because it will be really hot. Thank you. 
you can whip it straight away uh, just with a hand mixer is absolutely fine and you'll see the texture change as you do this don't whip too much and don't worry too much about the bubbles right now once you get this beautiful pillowy whipped silky texture you can take your beaters out and I'm dividing this mixture into two because I'm going to make a couple of just whipped soaps and then I'm going to turn a couple into whipped sugar scrubs. Now I know a lot of you are going to be going but you've got water and you're adding sugar. It is fine in this recipe because of the high soap content. You will find that you will use the soap well before there's any chance of the sugar dissolving and going syrupy. I have had no issues with this at all. It's a bit like when you add sugar to one of those bases that you can buy pre-made. There's normally no issue with those. So just do your own experiments and see how you get on. But really, I haven't found any issues. Otherwise, if you're worried about using sugar or salt, then you can use a different kind of exfoliant that doesn't dissolve. It's completely up to you. So now I've divided them up, I want to wait until they get to below 40 degrees C because I do have some cool down ingredients to add. The cool down ingredients are going to be a fragrance oil and a preservative and also a little bit of vitamin E. Now, the soap in the recipe is enough to emulsify the vitamin E, so we don't need to worry about that being an oil. It's the same for the fragrance oil. Preservative, you don't necessarily need, but I definitely would if you're selling them or gifting them, and especially because they will be used in the shower. It's, it's just good practice to add it. So that's what I'm adding to each of those. Again, the formula will be in the link in the description, so go and check that out. And then what we're going to do is whip them again to combine this and also give it more of a whip texture. Now, I got a bit overexcited with this one and completely over whipped it, but I thought I won't do it again. I'll leave it in because it shows you kind of what it looks like when it is over whipped. You'll know this instinctively once you've done it a few times. It's a bit like whipping cream. It's like it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. So you have to catch it just before it gets a bit too thick. Um, it still works really well and I used this one as the sugar scrub because of the texture um, but the other one uh, I did better so you can see it looks a lot thicker in this one and it's uh, sort of a bit more lumpy whereas the other one stays a bit more silky and pillowy. See, this half looks a lot better, a lot more silky. So now they're divided into two. I can pipe this one because I'm just going to keep it as whipped soap and then I'll add sugar to the other one. So for piping, I've just got a normal piping bag and I've just put it in a jug to make it a bit easier to put the soap into. And then we'll just pipe that into little tubs like we would if we had a pre-made base. So I won't talk over this bit. I'll let you enjoy the ASMR because some people do like these piping videos. Don't forget to weigh them if you're selling them because you want to make sure your customer gets exactly the amount that they're paying for. So before you ask, you can't use melt and pour soap base with this. The reason why is because it would be completely pointless if you're going to use a pre-made soap to make this whipped soap, then you may as well just be using a whipped soap base in the first place. 
I hope that makes sense. Um, the reason to do this is so that you have complete control over the initial soap that you're using because you've made it from scratch and that adds to this final product. And then you've got complete control over the whipped soap because you're the one adding the ingredients to it. This means that you're not beholden to changes in pre-made bases if they change the recipe or as we know sometimes it can come out sloppy or grainy or too hard they're very changeable whereas if you make your own soap and then make your own batches of whipped soap from it you have complete control over how they come out and you can make consistent batches every time and also in my opinion it's just that little bit cheaper to do anyway so with this other half, I'm adding the sugar. The best way to do this is to weigh out lots of sugar into a jug and weigh it, including the jug weight, and then just pour in the sugar until you've got the consistency that you want, then weigh the jug again and deduct that from the initial weight so that you know how much you added and then you can adjust your formula accordingly so next time you know exactly how much sugar to use and remember to always work in percentages so i'm not going to pipe this because it is sugar scrub so we'll just fill the jar with the spatula And I will show you how it performs. However, this will vary depending on your initial cold process soap recipe. This wasn't a very foamy soap recipe. It didn't have many, many bubbles, so it doesn't produce many bubbles. If you want more, you can actually add things uh, like surfactants. You can use some cocamidopropyl betaine in the recipe, perhaps, perhaps some SLSA or some SCI. Um, it will be completely fine and it'll add to the bubbly, lathery effect of your final soap. Or, of course, if you've used coconut oil or something like that in your initial soap recipe, you'll find that it bubbles a lot more. I hope you liked this. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, drop them below. And like I said, don't forget to check the blog post out in the description and also subscribe because that would make me very happy and I'll see you in the next one.